All right. Uh, it is uh, Bumblebee the movie trailer day, and you are with Daryl the Cybertronian Beast. That is me. And Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko, that is him. Hello. And we're going to do a reaction trailer to this, uh, our reaction video to this trailer. And, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, you know, see what we say. Um, it's been, uh, I mean, it's what? 10 30 at night so it's been really hard not to watch this thing all yeah. freaking day um and and see everyone's kind of posting little pictures here and there so it's uh you know sure we've seen a little bit you know peek through but we haven't actually watched the trailer so you know uh i mean it's looks like i mean i'm looking at it here it's two minutes and 22 seconds so uh i mean jeremy do you want to say anything before we uh, hit play here I mean, we know a lot of what's going to be in the movie just from talking about it on the podcast. And generally, our expectations are pretty high. Just from what we've heard of the tone of the movie, they're saying the right things. We'll see. You know, but also the first trailer for every movie has given us hope that it's been mm -hmm. utterly crushed. Yeah. So I, I don't, I'm trying to keep my expectations and just hope that this is you know, just a fun last hurrah of this universe. So. Well said. All right. Well, then without further ado, let's hit play. In three, two, one, go. Well, it's counting us down. Right. Sweet. Oh yeah, it's a Paramount picture. Yes. Guessing that is Haley. What's her name? Jerry Seinfeld's daughter. Oh, and um, that was um, the dude from the first movie. But this is set years before that happened. I can get you to explain that to me again, but after. Okay. Um, there's a face in the scar. It's just like your toy. No. Fuck no. <laughs> of course. Aww. What's your name? It's John Cena. There he is. <clears throat> You. Oh, and he has to have the bee-looking face. This is why you're here, B. You know, B music can help you say what you're feeling. Try this. <laughs> so the reason he talks with radio stuff is right. because of her. Because of her. So what I was saying at the beginning was the the um I can't remember the guy's name, but the car salesman from the first movie. Oh, Bernie Mac. Yeah. You were hearing his voice. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay, well. How and how does he get that, apparently, I guess? Uh, I I'm guessing that's just for us to relate. Okay. Because he's in the in the Volkswagen body. Mm -hmm. what do you think well um right away and uh, i don't know how i didn't think of this before 
while we were talking about it, you know, and all that. But if Haley Steinfeld's character is supposed to be like the new pal to Bumblebee throughout this this movie, m- maybe she doesn't survive this movie. You know, mm. maybe it's a Rogue One scenario where you know they they kill off the characters at the end because they are uh, you know they're not in the upcoming movies. I would really doubt with with everything we've heard from the tone that they're going for with this movie. I really doubt that you there is. I mean, kill them off. Well, I mean, this is set in the eighties. Sure. So she'll be much older in 2008 when the first movie happens. You don't think people died in the eighties? <laughs> they did, but <laughs> if, if, if she's like, say what she was driving the car. So say she's 16. Sure. In this one. She would be 46. Yeah, yeah. She's probably moved on. Well, you, you don't you got a better car. You had a transformer <laughs> for a car, you know? Yeah. So, maybe, he, well, okay. So maybe um, like John Cena's character has an S7 on his chest, tying it into the Sector 7 stuff. Sure. Maybe she goes and starts working for them. Maybe. Maybe know. she turns into and becomes, uh, what's her name? Um, the mother. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say um, uh, the the chick from Fargo. Uh, her character, McDermott. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, she's older than forty six or whatever. But yeah. So, but you know, she. I would assume that if you have a transformer for a vehicle. And you spend a summer with it or whatever. And that and obviously traumatic experiences. Something happens and it, something tries to kill you during it. What, you know, you're going to remember that for the rest of your life. And you're probably not going to let that car out of your sight. Or you're going to keep up with that car, you know, mm-hmm. throughout the rest of your life. Because that was pretty freaking cool. Or... Right you're dead. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I, that's just a, I, I don't know. That just kind of come up to the top of my head because it's something that, you know, I thought of while watching this because they seem to have a, a moment while they're in the water together. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. It seems fun. The, uh, it seems like a, 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 a bit like a, uh, I don't want to say a romantic comedy, but, you know, it's some something like a, a there's a, a it's it's kind of like a buddy picture so yeah. far, but not like it's like a boy girl buddy comedy thing. So it's going to be cute. I am. They may have done this just to because of the movie, but if Bumblebee doesn't actually talk. Right. This sucks. <laughs> yeah. It, I agree that with that. So, you know, they may and they may have strictly edited this trailer to make it seem like he doesn't speak. So we know at the end of the movie, he's not going to speak. Right. But I, don't know, I, 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 I'm not expecting him to speak at all. N- neither am I. <laughs> now, let's talk about the, uh, the star scream in the room. There's a very G1 looking Starscream here. That... It's a nice mix of the Bayformers and the G1. Yeah. Like I'm just kind of going through right now and like pausing it on this transformation. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to say this is probably, if you're going to say mix between Bayformers and G1, I'm going to say it's got to be 80% G1, 20% mm-hmm. Bayformers. It's heavy leanings to the G1 stylings. It's a Decepticon the, with colors in the live action movie. That's yeah, not something we see often. And to top it off, it's not an F-15 Eagle, which is what the G-1 uh, Decepticon jets were. This is a F-4 Phantom, I believe it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that a lot of people uh, were posting about today when uh, I was trying desperately to avoid all 
you know, all information about the thing is that, uh, you know, oh my God, Starscream's not an F-15. He's an, he's a phantom. He's an F-4 phantom. Oh my God. You know, I don't care. I don't care that he's not an F-15. He doesn't need to be an F-15. It'd be nice if he turned into an F-15, but it's not a deal breaker for me. He's been a bunch of different car, uh, planes over the years. Yeah. What is important to me is the colors are, are right. The head mm-hmm. is right. I mean, the, the head is perfect. We, I love I, it. We don't know who the voice actor for Starscream is going to be, but I really hope it's someone that can do kind of the G1 mm-hmm. screechiness of the voice. Yeah, I would hope so too. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, I know we know that he's the big bad of this movie, right? So I hope that there's other, let's like call them minions, right? Mm-hmm. That he's not the only Decepticon here in this movie and that it's not a tale between, uh, you know, Bumblebee and Starscream with some, you know, some communications from Bumblebee to Optimus Prime because we know that Peter Cullen does do a voice in the movie. Um, we also, if we recall from, you know, we reported on tr- the show is that Martin Short has a voice in this movie, you know, where they're fitting the, uh, the cat in the hat in this movie. I have no idea. Oh, so you but... go the cat in the hat. I go all the way back to SCTV. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, SCTV is such a mainstay here, you um, know, in Canada that I, I just kind of, I just assume I don't about know about it. it. <laughs> I've seen it all. I don't even think about yeah. it anymore. But, uh, but yeah, so no, Cat in the Hat is what I go to. But um, I'll be interested to know what Martin Short actually does a voice for. Um, if it is a Transformer, uh, I'm going to assume it's an Autobot. I can't see Martin Short doing the voice of a bad guy, but it'd be cool if he did. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see uh, what they do here. I'm going to give, as I do with every single freaking movie, I give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, I love this Starscream design. Um, I'm looking at it too in the, you know, going, going through the transformation again and again. Um, it's, it's cool. Looking at that G1 head is, is just, you know, it's just nostalgic, man. Mm -hmm. But, uh, it does appear that Bumblebee's got at least two modes, maybe three during this, uh, during this movie, because at one point he does appear to be a Jeep. Um, so that's kind of interesting. What, what do you think about the body parts coming out of the alt mode? Like at one, in one scene, you see his arm pop out so he can grab a railing so he doesn't slide off the road. That they, they did that in G1 cartoons. Yeah. So, I mean, although those were kind of, you know, odd and, and very much, you know, full of errors at most points. <laughs> this is, it's kind of fun. If it makes sense and it doesn't, you know, kind of ruin the plot, I'm, I'm okay with it. But if it's just kind of like wild and outrageous, like, you know, I'm going to okay. reach my arm out and I'm going to grab this soda, you know, to give it to the person riding in my passenger seat. You know, that's, yeah. it's just, it's no, it's not necessary. If they just do it as a gag, then, you know, well, I mean, the way that we see it in the trailer is he's racing down the road and well, it looks he's not actually on the road. It just past the scene again. He's climbing up it? this hill in the, in the trailer. It's around 150. OK, I'm going to check it out. He, he's climbing up this hill. And he's grabbing onto the railing on the side of the road so he doesn't fall back down. Oh, yeah. As they're driving. That's up. right. Yep, so I, I think that's it. a good way to implement it. Mm-hmm. I mean, plus, we see at the very beginning where like his arms, his arm falls out from the bottom of the car, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which he does make the cardinal mistake of of all terrible transformer figures, where you have the visual head syndrome, mm-hmm. right in the bottom of the car. There, you never that, give yourself away in the. That almost. will just that will just make the toy. You know, it's just something you can't complain about in the toy. Yeah, it's now show <laughs> accurate, right? Right. Crazy. With all those YouTube reviewers complaining about this, we'll show them. We'll make a cannon. 
So, well, that that should do it, I guess. I'm sure that uh, the other two guys, Charles and Yoshi, will probably have something to say about it. Uh, I I fear what Yoshi has to say about it, um, but uh, it is '80s, and mm-hmm. and it is uh, an original looking, you know, Bumblebee. So, you know, maybe he'll like it. Who knows? But uh, yeah, stay tuned for their thoughts. All right. Yeah. And thanks for watching. Um, be sure to check out our show. Um, this will talk about this will be in transmission salt mode next week. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And just go to transmissionspodcast.com for all of our stuff. Right on. Thanks. And we'll see you later. Bye.